That's just wrong. How are you guys doing? I'm Chris Ignato, and you are watching Nature Now. Actually, what you're going to be watching in a minute are American toads. And I'm pretty excited about this because there's quite a ruckus going on. Now both American toads and Fowler's toads will share the habitat in this area. But I can definitely tell these are American toads for several reasons. One, their song, their trill, is a lot longer. Um, Fowler's toads, they actually kind of sound like a, a, a disgruntled sheep. It's like a, a meh type of sound. Sorry. And, uh, well, the American toads sound like this. And their trill can last anywhere from like 6 seconds to 30 seconds. The ones around here are usually about 10 seconds, but I've seen them go for about 40 seconds in some places. Another way to tell the difference is if you look at the tibia on the American toads, the, the warts or the bumps on them will be bigger than the bumps on their femur. Sometimes it's hard for you to see that without getting real close to them. On the Fowler's toads, the bumps or warts on the femur are the same size as those on the tibia. That's another easy way to tell the difference. A third way to spot the difference is, well, looking in the spots. If you look on their back, you'll see these, these dark patches, part of their design. On the Fowler's toad, there will usually be about anywhere between two to four warts within those spots. Whereas on the American toads, there's generally just about one or two warts within those spots. So that's another way to tell the difference. So what goes on is, just like the wood frogs and the spring peepers a couple months ago, is the males will come out of the landscape, find these pools. They don't really need the vernal pools that the spring peepers and wood frogs need. They'll even breed in bodies of water that have minnows and stuff swimming in them. The males get there first, establish a bit of territory, and then they start singing, and it builds up to a loud, long chorus. And you can hear it from several hundred yards or meters away. What that does is the females throughout the landscape will hear that and it allows them to find these pools where the males are in hopes to breed and lay those eggs. The females come on down and then they have their, their choice of what males they wish to select and breed with. Usually there are only a few females on the scene and dozens of males. That's why these males get so worked up and go after anything they see, including my hand. I want to try something for a second and see if it attracts any toads. <laughs> it worked. Kind of embarrassing, but it worked. Often, a male will mistake another male for a female, and he'll go after them to attempt amplexus. That's what you call it when they, they couple together. If it's another male, that male will let out what's known as a release call. That release call is basically announcing to the male that, hey, hey whoa, I'm another guy. You better look somewhere else. It's only the males of both frogs and toads that have any vocalizations at all. Now, being toads, they're different from frogs. They generally, unless they're in water, have dry skin and they're covered with a lot of bumps. It's a very common misconception that a toad can give you warts. It cannot give you warts in any way, even if it pees on you. Not gonna happen. That pee is just meant to taste bad, and it makes them a little bit lighter, they can get away. But it kind of distracts you, and you're like, ugh, what's this stuff in my mouth? Another form of defense that toads have is they will puff up with a lot of air, and it makes it harder for them to swallow because it makes them larger. There's a snake that loves to feed on toads, and it's equipped with a special mechanism that allows them to swallow those toads. It's got spines in the back of its throat coming off its, uh, its spine and they will pierce the toad and deflate it. And it makes it easy for the snake to swallow that toad. 
Like I said, once a male finds a female, they go into what is known as amplexus. That's where the male has grabbed the female with his front legs behind her front legs, and he's not going to let go for anything. Sometimes a male will be very persistent. He'll see a couple in amplexus and he'll still go after it trying to get at the female. Usually what happens is both the female and the male that she's coupled with will kind of kick away the male that's pursuing her. Sometimes you'll witness little scuffles or even brawls between a whole bunch of toads and maybe one female and they just don't give up. Often a single release call or a bit of a kick is sufficient. Amplexus can last all day. The male will catch the eggs with his back feet and fertilize them as the female lays them. She will actually lay anywhere between 2,000 and 20,000 eggs. The eggs of toads are really different than the egg masses of frogs. And the way to tell the difference is, is real easy because toads lay their eggs in somewhat of a, a string of pearls fashion. It's like one or two long strands, whereas frogs lay their eggs in a large mass like the wood frogs do. Spring peepers sometimes lay their eggs in a mass, but often they just attach them to debris and stuff. But those toad eggs are really easy to see because it's a long string of eggs. The reason why they lay so many eggs is maybe only 10 of them will actually reach adulthood. Their mortality rate is very high. The way the female keeps all those eggs inside her is they're actually really small and compressed when they're inside the body. Once they hit the water, there's a special protein that allows them to soak up hundreds of times their weight in water. So that's how you see so many eggs in the water and uh, wonder how did all that come out of just one female? Well, there you go. So Fowler's toads and American toads can hybridize, but that's usually only where their habitats, you know, intersect with each other. If you find a toad in, say, a sandy area, then it's pretty sure to be a Fowler's toad. If you find a toad in the woods, it could either be an American toad or a Fowler's toad. I'm sure you've noticed that on their back behind their eyes are what look to be two large warts. Those, in fact, are their first line of defense. Those are called paratoid glands, and within them are pretty powerful poisons or toxins. Now, say you're a predator and you get a toad in your mouth, that'll most likely cause a little bit of pressure on a paratoid gland. That gland will secrete a white liquidy stuff that causes a lot of burning, some vomiting, it can cause cardiac issues, and in some cases, it can even be fatal, say if you're a dog or something. Something I really enjoy about these, these toads singing, and it's a lot easier to see at night when I'm holding a flashlight, is their, their trilling causes a vibration with a ton of concentric rings coming off of them in the pools of water. And it's just really cool to see. I really enjoy it. So the rear leg of American toads and many other toad species has a device. It looks kind of like a thumb with a dark, hard portion on it. It allows them to dig with their back feet into the ground, creating burrows that they actually back themselves up into. An American toad in the wild can live generally about 10 years or so if something doesn't get to it first. In captivity, they've been known to live up to 30 years. Wow. I hope you had as much fun as me, you know, watching this video, and I just want to thank you for watching. Uh, until next time, Chris Ignato, signing out. If you like this video, be sure to check out this video over here that YouTube has selected specifically for you based on your watch time. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, but you got to click the bell icon, because if you don't, YouTube will never let you know when a new video of mine comes out.